Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another <laughs> moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Uh, what are you doing? I'm recreating the 2010 Nobel Prize winning experiment for physics. Oh wow, that sounds cool. Can we watch? Absolutely. So, when do you start? What do you mean? I've been doing it this whole time. You mean sticking and unsticking a bit of black stuff to a piece of tape wins a Nobel Prize? No, of course not. That'd be silly. They measured it, too. You know, I thought winning a Nobel Prize would be a bit more difficult. Well, it isn't about the simplicity of the experiment or how hard it was to discover the discovery. What it is is what they discovered. In this case, graphene. Most of us are familiar with graphite, commonly called pencil lead. Graphite is a relative of both coal and diamond in that all three are made up of carbon atoms. The difference is how those atoms are arranged. For example, if we look at the way carbon and diamond is arranged, we'd see something like this. A three-dimensional crystalline structure, very solid, very hard. Graphite, on the other hand, is made up of layers of graphene, sheets of carbon atoms, only an atom thick stacked on top of each other. A millimeter graphite, that's the space between two of these very tiny lines, contains close to three million layers of graphene. These layers are very weakly held together so they easily split apart, which most of us have experienced when writing with a pencil. As you scrape the graphite across the paper, you leave behind many layers of graphene. The problem was isolated in a single layer of graphene for study. Most scientists used to think it was impossible to separate out what is basically a crystal that is one atom thick. but. In 2004, Andrei Geim and Konstantin Novoselov did it using, of all things, sticky tape. They took a small flake of graphite, stuck it on one end of a piece of tape, folded the tape over, and pulled it apart, essentially peeling apart layers of graphite, making it thinner. They then repeated it over and over down the tape. So after they did this about 10 to 20 times, they ended up with what turned out to be an individual layer of graphene, for which they won the Nobel Prize. But what's the big deal about a tiny piece of pencil lead? Well, the big deal is it's nanotechnological applications. When we're talking about nanotechnology and nanoscale science, we're talking about things that are billionths of a meter in size, about the size of molecules. And when things get that small, they start to behave differently. For example, on this chart, we're gonna look at the properties of color, flexibility, strength, and conductivity for both graphite and graphene. Graphite, for example, is sort of a shiny black color, but graphene is transparent. Graphite is not flexible, but graphene is very flexible, able to stretch close to 20% its original size. And while graphite is brittle so that it easily sheds layers, the individual graphene layers are very strong. The one thing they have in common is they both can conduct electricity. Let's look at it a little closer. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. We are going to test the conductivity of graphite. For this, you'll need a 9-volt battery, two alligator clips, a 5mm 1.5-volt DC LED, any color, all of which are available in most electronic shops, as well as a 6B pencil, available at most art and hobby stores, ruler, and paper. First, using the 6B pencil, draw and color in a box about 1 cm by 6 cm long. Make sure it's completely filled in and very dark. I recommend against using a standard number 2 pencil, as you will need to draw with it for much longer and you still won't get a very nice effect. Bend the longer wire coming off the LED. Connect one alligator clip from the negative side of the 9 volt battery to the shorter wire coming off the LED. Connect the other alligator clip to the positive side of the battery. Press the bent LED wire to one side of the box and the alligator clip to the other, slowly bringing them closer together and then away. Just don't let them touch as you can damage your LED. Oh wow, the brightness of the LED changes. For some additional experiments, try making the box bigger or different shapes and see how well the LED works. What if you add in more power? By the way, if it doesn't work, color in some more graphite and try again. So, it always seems to get dimmer the further the LED is from the other wire. Why? The brightness changes because graphite is a conductor, which means electricity can flow through it. However, it isn't a very good conductor. When the wires are close together, most of the electricity easily flows between the wires. But the further apart you spread your wires, the more electricity is lost due to the distance and so the brightness decreases. Remember that graphite is basically layers and layers of graphene. 
So as electricity attempts to flow through all these layers, some is lost, which is why graphite is a poor conductor. But just one layer of graphene is an excellent conductor, better than copper and other metals. Once we combine the highly conductive nature of graphene with its transparency, durability, and flexibility, lots of potential applications become possible. Imagine faster computing speeds, more durable and even conductive plastics just by adding graphene, more efficient and cheaper solar panels composed of graphene, and even computers that consist of nothing but a clear, flexible screen. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.